Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're in chapter four and well actually no, this is actually chapter five, cut four or five forward slices. So this is chapter five and we're gonna be talking about maps, uh, which is another type of data type that is built into Go. And we're gonna look at what is a map and then we're gonna start talking about declaring it and using maps. All right, so um, if you remember, we were just left chapter four, where we were talking about ar um, slices, and before that chapter three, we were talking about arrays. So arrays and slices, again, are pretty much the same thing. Of course, we know now that a slice really um, uses an array on, underneath, but in terms of the usage of how you use them, if I give you an array versus a slice, you use them still the same way. So let's just start off with by saying that, let's imagine that we had var A is an um, array, right? And so when we declare an array, we put the size here, like, you know, 20 or something, and we say the type is int. So that gives us a 20, 20 element array of int. And we can say var s for some slice is, you know, we don't give it um, any size, and we say, so this is a nil slice, essentially, right? Because it's not initialized to have any underlying array. Of course, you can say s1 is equals to, um, you know, if you take a and you slice it, you know, somehow, I don't know, you know, this is a full slice of that array. So that also works fine. And the reason I'm having some error, um, errors there is because I'm not using it. So I could say print line A, S, and, you know, S1, for example. And that is gonna be um, fine once it's saved there. And of course I can say go run main, and it's gonna print um, out my array of 20 integers of zero, my empty nil slice, and then this second slice S1, which is just um, using this array on the, underneath. Now, I want to focus um, your attention back here, um, a little bit too far, back here. And where we have this array, we says 20 elements, and we know how to access each element. We, um, you know, uh, have to provide an index of zero or more. It's, um, it's a number, right? So the index is a number. So that's the definition of an array. And even with a slice, you have to provide. But this one is easier to see. When you talk about maps, maps are different data types. So one of the things we can say with an array is an array, um, an array takes an integer index and produces, you know, whatever um, element type type you specify here. So for example, I can do var array one, and I can say I have an array of 10 elements, and it contains strings, for example. And so here, um, string, come on, str, ing. Um, so now I'm saying that oh, my array, my array is an element of 10 strings. And so you can say it takes an integer, you give this array an integer index, and it produces in this case, a string, here it will produce an int. And of course I can do arrays of arrays, array of booleans, you get the idea. So you wanna kind of think of it in a way of mapping, right? It's like it maps a integer or int value to a string value here. And up here, it maps, maps an int value to another int value. But we know that, how, like I said before, we can do um, of uh, any of the other types, right? Float, 64, 32, complex number, whatever, right? And so what is a map then? If this is mapping from int to da da da, notice how your index is always integer. Again, always an integer when it comes to an array and a thing. What if we wanted to do something more, um, what was I say, flexible? So. Let's just start off by saying, and I'm going to keep this up for a little bit, and I'm going to say that there's this data type called a map. And so we could say var m is a map that takes, that maps things from integer to integer. And so now this map m pretty much looks just like this array m, okay? And let's put this uh, fmt print line m. And like that. And so now we actually have a nil map, which is almost like, oh, we have a nil slice when we, you know, create a slice that doesn't point to anything. 
and so if I run this you can see this is telling me it's a map and it's empty okay a nil map empty map and so but this does map from um, thing so let's look at it this way if I did this and I say a is equals to an array of x number of integers let's just do two for example keep things um, easy for me to type um, or even if we decide to make it a slice because we know that one underneath is going to use an array and I say the slice is equals to is a slice of int that had and these are the elements in that slice of int let's call it 21 and 53 okay and so we still got the same thing is that this slice is going to map some integer to these integer element value okay and here for a map we can say essentially the same thing I have a map of int that maps the int and I want to initialize it but the difference is since I'm saying that all the index or the key in, when we're talking about a map we call this the key and this the value okay so this is the key and the value type so key type value type so my key here I'm saying is integers and the value let's do 21 and my key is 1 and my value is 53 okay and so let's print out these two now and you see they look essentially the same this is an array notice how it's shown square bracket index 0 index 1 here my map is very explicit I specify the index or the key right we call it the key I specify the key but it looks like an index and I say that oh, when you use the key 0 it maps to this value 21 when you use the key 1 it maps to the value 53 now the reason I'm getting this wiggly line is because Go is telling me that hey since I can derive your type your, from your very value there's no need for you to specify it here and so you're being redundant so, so that's what it's kind of telling me um, but either way it still works the exact same same way now there's an advantage to how you can use a map as we know when you have a slice if you want to grow that slice you use append okay but with a map I don't have to use a pen what I can do is I can just add more stuff to my map I can say M index of it is um, or the key sorry I want to use two now and I want to replace put in that location you know minus 100 for example and then I'm going to rerun my code here and now I have as you can see I've grown my map okay so map gives you this nice flexibility so let's review and uh, I'm gonna take this out and I'll say it oh, I have a nil map and then of course I can have a map you know m1 is equals to map of int to int okay and these are some values let me just put some values in here uh, let me copy some values that I have over here uh, no let me just type them in it doesn't matter actually it doesn't matter what I have so two <clears throat> I notice the colon sent to three three colon 21 again okay four five all right so let me just leave it that's that seems to be enough and so I don't have an array anymore and so notice how we kind of get to use this almost like an array right look at that how you give the name of the map square bracket and where you put the index for an array you specify the key you want and you can have that be assigned to or overridden so let's do this again and I'm gonna let that save and run oh wait a second hey, unexpected comma where is the unexpected comma blah 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 oh I missed a comma right here and I got an extra colon uh, so I don't need that there so the, the elements are of the map are separated by comma just like an array but for each element you have to provide two things right you have to provide that key and the value and that's where you use the colon and so I run that and there we go right it looks pretty much the same now um, you might say well okay if I'm gonna be mapping things from int to int that doesn't look very much different than an array and sure I can grow it by just assigning but I can grow my slice by assigning too 
Well, you don't have to just map to ins. Just like how you can have an array of Boolean, you can do the same thing or float, for example. So, for example, I can create another map to, and I can say this is mapping from ints to float 64, and I can say this value is, you know, 21.5, and this is 0 0.053, and this is minus 0 point, you know, 1.73, and you get the idea, right? And so that is my float 64 value. And of course, um, Go doesn't want me to create stuff that I don't use. So I go over there, I wait for it to get saved, and it's safe, and I run it. And there you go. I have a map of floats. And of course, I can use, you know, elements from my map um, the same way like I would specify and use them either to read the value or um, or to assign it like you saw me to like you saw I did before okay and so there we go um, three and three now the thing to notice about a map is that since you're providing the key it's not necessarily always in order as you can see when I run it up here the force element inside my map had the key one when I reran it the force element had three and so you don't care right because you're gonna be um, able so if you have to iterate over a map which we can get to as you can see depending on when you iter when you iterate over it um, you know your thing is not gonna be in the order in which it was inserted so it doesn't give you guarantee in terms of the order of how you insert things but whatever you put in there you're gonna be able to get back out with um, thing and there's an other operations that we're gonna be able to um, to do with a map so as a heads up, let me just give you, for example, um, some of the operations that to come that we're going to be able to do. So uh, if we go back and look at Google's definition of what a map is, it says it's an unordered grouping of elements, which we saw, unordered grouping of elements, a group elements together of one type. So everything in the map has to be one type, just like an element, and then that type of it is called the element type. And it's indexed by a set of unique keys. Again, we said the thing that we use to index into the map is keys. And it could be of another type. It doesn't have to be of another type. Because we certainly seen index of type int and uh, element type or key type is called, and the element type or value type is called int also, right? And so the, the thing that you're using for indexing is called the key type. Now, these are some of the operations you can do. If you intend to construct a map, this is how you construct it, map the key type, and then the value type. So when it puts value um, or with this open parentheses, um, open and close thing, it's just so you can initialize it. But of course, we can just put the value type and then we don't have to initialize it. But if you want to specify some values, then we did that. In certain, we saw that. You use the map, the key, and then you assign a value. If you want to look up, we did that too. Map and the key, and you get it. We haven't looked at deleting something from a map. And we certainly haven't looked at iterating over it, but again, this looks very similar to how we iterated. We use the range function to iterate over an array and a slice, right? There we had an index and the value. Here we have the key and the value. And of course, the length function um, that we, we know from array and thing. So those are things to come. But um, so far, we've been doing some pretty simple things. So let's continue with creating some maps and using them. So I've shown you that how you can use um, thing. What about if we had um, another map 3 equals the map of int um, to, well, not, let's just do um, map of integers to boolean, right? Um, and so we want to put some value in. So let's say we put 1 and we said 3, um, through, true. And then um, let's say 5 and true and 4 and false, and 10 and false, right? And 101 and true, right? And 99 and false. So, of course, we can have this reprinted out also. I mean, you know, same thing. Hopefully, you're not surprised um, by anything you're seeing so far. And so there we go. So what might this represent? Well, it just so happened that what I was thinking about is the number and whether it's a prime number or not. So 1 prime, 5 prime, 
4 not prime, 10 not prime, 101 prime, 99, it can be divisible by 3, so not prime. So, um, you know, it's false. So you can use a map to record something, information like that. Well, why stop there? Um, what about if we wanted to do a map of the int, some number we're going to assign to each day and the string, uh, which is the name of the day, right? Um, so we can do, um, I'm going to do the shorthand for now. Uh, equals the map of int to string, and then the value there is 0 is going to be Sunday, 1 is going to be Monday, 2, Tuesday, 3, uh, three Wednesday, 4, Thursday, 5, okay, let's go to another line, 5, Friday, and six is Saturday, All right? And of course, you can print this out uh, again. Same thing over and over. I hope that you get in bored with how easy this is to do and use, right? Um, very consistent. Um, and there we go. And you know, that might be. And then, of course, if we want to print out, let's say. Um, let's say we want to do a reverse mapping, so we could have map5 is equals to a map of string to int. Now, I might say it's any of the basic types. Now, not only any of the basic type, but any type that supports equal. You know, you have to be able to test because the map has to say, is whatever you pass in as a key equal to some other key value? And yes or no allows it to think. So if the type cannot be checked with, an equal, with equals, then it wouldn't work. So, for example, you cannot use as a key type. A, um, a function, for example, that, that, that cannot be checked, right? Um, and so, um, or a slice, for example, that, that, that does not equal. You can say, are two slices equal in terms of just if slice A is equal to slice B? Like that, that wouldn't work that way, right? Um, so here is our um, mapping of string to int, and we could reverse this. We can say Sunday is our key, and the value is that, and Monday is our key, and the value is that, and Tuesday is our key, and the value is that, and WDNESDAY is our key, and the value is that, and Thursday is our key, and the value is four, and Friday is our key, and the value is five, I think, and Saturday is our key, and the value is six. And so now we can do something like day colon equals to Thursday. And then we can say FMT that print LN. And we can say, well, what is the value for that? What is the value for day? And of course, we should expect four, right? Um, see, there we go. No errors. And that's what we get here. We get four, okay? Um, so let me take out this one from here. Bam. All right. So we get four. Oh, maybe I should put it back. Uh, let's use something more interesting. What's the interesting value of one? Okay. Uh, I, I said out of four from there and then the four from here. So I didn't want it to be too confusing. So I changed that. Okay. So again, pretty straightforward and pretty, pretty boring. All right. I mean, day, let's use some fat arrow. Back to that. Right, makes it a little tad bit nicer, right? So towards the map till day number four. And so this is basically how you create an empty map, a null map, and we're gonna see how you can use this to say basically this is my a type, my that my variable is of this type, and then of course now you can later assign to it. And then um, then you can of course initialize a map at runtime. Um, at compile time, but then we're going to see just like with slices, you can be able to create a map using the make function. But that's a little bit ahead, um, just kind of giving you a heads up. Um, but this is the basic of using a map. So I hope you find this interesting, um, this data type. Um, a lot of languages have it. Um, some of them it come baked in, some of them it comes via a library. Google, um, Go language have it baked in and it's very for performant, right? So don't be afraid to use it if you, you, you need that kind of flexibility. Um, again, the advantage here um, with a map over a 
array or a slice is that your index could be a different type other than integer is one. Two, you don't have to think about pre-allocating the size you need. With a slice, we know that you don't have to do that either. You can use a pen. And map is the same thing. As you start inserting things underneath, it kind of grows and reallocates. Details you really don't need to know about right now. But um, so feel free, go ahead and have fun. I'm going to end the video pretty much here and say thank you for your time in terms of taking your time to subscribe. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your time to come here and watch the video. And if you provide feedback, thank you for taking the time to do that too. And if you have taken the time to spread the word, I want to thank you for that also. Um, take care. See you in the next video. Um, practice and definitely let me know if you have issues or comments, suggestions, etc. All right. Bye. Have a great day.